Hello. <clears throat> Hi there and welcome. My name is Karen Kennedy and I'm a certified nutritionist and I use continuous glucose monitors with my clients. And I find that continuous glucose monitors are extremely useful as a diagnostic tool, an accountability tool, and an educational tool. Um, and so I'm here today to give you a short and practical but hopefully useful webinar on how you can share your continuous glucose monitor data with your clients during your telehealth appointments to really showcase their use and, and educational value for you. So this will be short and sweet and hopefully just something you can click back to to learn how to do things. So first and foremost, I want to tell you that I am not affiliated with Abbott, who makes the Freestyle Libra products that I'm talking about. This doesn't represent them. I, don't them. I am just a clinician like you, and I'm here to support you to help put this tool in your hands. So uh, what follows is simply a tour of LibraView, which is a free web-based software that Abbott provides for providers to share their patients' data. So this is the page you get when you log in, and when you start using continuous glucose monitors with your patients, you'll want to log in and get yourself a free account. And then on your patient's end, they're going to log in and create an account for themselves. And this is what will connect you. So LibraView. Before we get into the business of viewing data, I want to point out that this is also the place you go to upload data. So for those of you who have been following some of my presentations, you know that while most of your patients can use their smartphones to read their CGM sensors, many of them, and, and when you use your smartphone, the data automatically uploads to the system if you set it up that way. If your smartphone, for whatever reason, then you're purchasing a separate reader that's offline. It's just, it's a glucometer. And if you use that, then you can see on here, there's a little wire. There's a cable that comes with the reader and it's a USB cable that plugs into the computer. And this is how you upload that data to share with you, is you go to this page or your client goes to this page and you click up here. Um, and this is how you upload a device. That's, this is where you do it. It's very straightforward. Now instead, you can see my little finger here move to the right. This is the button you push with all the people to view your client's data. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to click that. And this takes us to this page. Um, and you can see on this page in the background is all the clients that I currently have on LibraView that I'm following right now um, with their information you know, blocked off. But you can see this finger here pointing to a, a person plus person. This is where you invite a patient. So one of your clients has got their continuous glucose monitor from the pharmacy and you want to connect with them. You will just invite a patient, put their name and email on here. And you, they ask for a date of birth. This does not have to be accurate, but you can, you can put their date of birth in there and just hit save. and. The invitation will go to your patient and then they'll be connected on here. And then this is the page you come to when you're wanting to look at the data from your patients. So the first thing I want to point out is on this page you have your whole list of patients and it is also a quick view for you to see everyone's average glucose how many scans they're doing in a day and their percentage of time in target. And this can be just a helpful scan for you to see um, how's everybody doing? Um, is, are people using their continuous glucose monitors? Because maybe there's someone who's just not using it as much anymore and you might want to check in with them. Otherwise, from this page, you're just going to click. It's not obvious because it's not, it doesn't look like a hyperlink, but all you have to do is click on one of the lines that corresponds to your client and it takes you to their data. You come to this page, click on glucose reports, and you come to this page and you click on daily log. But before you click on daily log, you can see the AGP report. And we'll come back to the AGP report. But already you can see this gives you some valuable summary data. 
but I generally don't, I don't use the summary data when I'm talking to my patients. What I use is the daily log. Now this daily log, this is where the money is. This is where all the good information is. And you can, pro by looking at this right now, you can probably see why. So before I go into this, I want to remind you, if you haven't used these, that your patients have an opportunity to add notes in their, in their monitor, in their phone, this app, to say when they ate, roughly what they ate, if they actually woke up. They can write any brief note if it's on their phone. If, it, if they're using the reader, they can just put a very brief, they can just mark an apple that they ate a meal. So using the reader, the, store, the reader they get at the pharmacy makes it a little clunkier, but if they're using their phone, and most people are, they can add any note. So you can see this person wrote, um, LOL, Judith's fruit rum cake and a salmon sandwich, um, and sat at the computer. That's what she ate, and this was her, the result of her gluco the glucose curve afterwards. You know, here the person made a note, plain oatmeal with chia seeds and a cup of tea with milk. Um, had a cup of herbal tea and began eating vegetable soup. So by encouraging your patients to um, log things, and this is a great, this is a really practical way of logging. Um, I find that people do not like to log <laughs> their meals, but when it has such immediate benefit and they can, they get to use the information, boy, does that improve compliance in terms of logging their food. Because then when you pull it up here, and you can see a 24 hours of glucose directly correlates with what they eat and drink. And sometimes people will put in exercise. Um, you can see this person, because um, most of my clients go through a bit of a blood sugar boot camp with me. So we talk about all the things that you can do to mitigate high blood sugar. She knows that it's important to write down that she immediately sat down after a meal rather than walking around and. Um, so we could see what just sitting after a meal does. So this is, this is, I love this page because sometimes as a provider, you don't have to do anything at this point other than ask, so how did it go? Um, so let's talk about this meal and let's talk about this. And, you know, how do you think you can, you can use coaching language. How do you think, and, um, what do you think you can do next week for breakfast that would improve things? And then, you know, listen to them brainstorm because you've given them the keys to the kingdom here. This is giving your client the keys to the kingdom, and you've gone from being someone who tells them what to do to simply a coach that helps um, encourage them to look at the data and modify their diet and lifestyle accordingly. It's really empowering. So here's another view when you on this list over here, you can go to the AGP report. And the AGP report is somewhat useful in that it gives you a chance to see trends. So this is like a, a summary of an entire week, and it tells you the trends of this particular person. And you can see that there, you know, you, one great thing you can see here is their overnight trend is really flat. So that's a great thing, because that's often the first thing I'm looking at is, what is their glucose like overnight? Are they able to fast? Are they able to be in a fasted state for 12 hours overnight? And if not, if it's bouncing around for whatever reason, then you know you've got some dysglycemia or interrupted sleep. So that's, that's where this becomes a great way to diagnose things. Um, and you can see you know, where they're getting into trouble. And then of course, this is the glucose data that it's taken from. So that can be helpful. Um, that's back to daily log. Um, oh, this is going backwards. There we go. Meal time patterns is another choice you have. Um, I don't find this view as interesting. I just wanted to show it to you in case you find this useful. Um, this is another view that can be helpful. This is a weekly summary where you can look at an entire week all in one page. 
and it gives you average glucose and low events. Um, you might have, if you're working with a diabetic population, they might be logging their carbs and total insulin. So this, you know, this can be a great snapshot to allow you, this is what it can be helpful for. It's a great snapshot if you want to do a, a page capture and send this to a provider that you're collaborating with so that they can see what's going on. Um, oftentimes I have patients who I know are pre-diabetic, but their provider isn't co isn't co doing diagnosis codes that they're pre-diabetic. And I know that they could get their insurance to cover, could do partial coverage on their continuous glucose monitor if they code for pre-diabetes and obesity, because sometimes some insurance carriers will do this for that. Um, also, this helps when providers are considering using medication like metformin, or if, or if your shared patient is on something like that, and they're they're trying to control their blood sugar so they could get off metformin. So it helps everybody see where the patient's at and what their needs are. It's a great snapshot. The other one this is great for is, of course, after you've been working with someone for a long period of time, you'd like to be able to say, this is where you were and this is where you are now to show them how far they've come and the improvements they've made because that's so empowering. Um, it's so motivating. So this is a great page where you can do a little screenshot here and do a little screenshot um, from like three months prior to see how much. Because I'm telling you, two, just within two months of using this, you will start noticing a big difference in your patients. Um, yeah, you know, I think that's it. But I, I want to finish up with just this daily log. This daily log is where all the magic is. Um, you know, this is where you become the coach. Um, again, sometimes I will screenshot this and send it to providers, but this, this is how I tell people, yeah, that means, I don't have to tell them don't eat that. I say, wow, you ate that and this is what happened. And they could say, yeah, I know, that's not very good. And then I can say, wow, well, this is a good day. What was going on here? So more of this and less of that. And we can also look at trends. Um, let's say they have a meal that they really love, like plain oatmeal with chia seeds. You know, this, that went out of range a little bit. That's where I can say, oh, well, you had a cup of tea with milk. You know, why don't you skip on the milk? Because we know milk has extra sugar and see if that brings it down. And if they say, oh, I lo really love milk in my tea. How about, well, why don't you have that? And maybe go for a 10 or 15 minute stroll afterwards. Because we know that walking after a meal can mitigate glucose. Or um, maybe they do some weightlifting or exercise beforehand. So you give them the option. You can either change your meal or put a little exercise before or after your meal if you can mitigate it that way. And that gives them control. That gives them some choice. It's, you know, you have lots of levers. We know there's lots of levers we can pull to help um, manage our blood sugar. Um, you know, we can tell our patients they have those and we can tell them you don't have to pull them all at the same time. You choose. So give them that choice and treat them like adults with a choice and they can do that and then see the results. It's really powerful. Um, that's it. That's all I have for you. Just a short webinar. Um, I, I'm sure you'll have more questions. And if you do have more questions, I encourage you to join our Facebook group. This is just a free public group for using CGM in clinical practice. Um, I'm, I'm active on there. So please come and ask questions. You can Share screenshots of yours or your client's data to say, ah, this is going on. What do I do? Um, I really want to. Um, I really want to encourage people this as a um, as a valuable tool for nutritionists, dietitians, and health coaches. We can use this to help our patients. Um, I'm aware that it can be um, intimidating to start using a new um, a new tool on your own. And if you'd like some more mentoring and a little more hand-holding on this, my next group program for taking people through starts on April 11th. And what my group does is I take a group through the whole process of obtaining, installing, and optimizing the use of continuous glucose monitors. We use the Libra Freestyle 14-day system primarily, or the Libra 2, um, along with some basic blood sugar education. There's twice-weekly group coaching along with a private group feed and, and I run it through practice better. So this is an excellent opportunity for um, other providers like me to get some real life experience on using this equipment and seeing how to walk patients through the process. 
um, and especially if you use practice better you can see how I've laid that out and also if you do this program with me as a provider I throw in so there's no searching around it's just open and go there's a starter guide for your clients so these are um, brandable canva templates that's basically a big an ebook so you can just put your brand put all your colors and photos on there and this is what you can give to your clients to get them started so like I said it's just open and go you can just start using this confidently <clears throat> these are gorgeous handouts and you can get those for free so you, I really want you to be able to use this um, yeah, so that's what I have. You know, thank you for joining me today. I hope this webinar gave you a good idea of how to use continuous glucose monitors. And you can see that they can be used as a powerful tool for education and accountability. And, and they're fun. And, you know, they're fun. They're, you, it gamifies the, the health, um, improving your health. And people actually really enjoy using them because it puts so much control in their hands. So thanks for joining me today and have a good afternoon. Bye.